I've practiced hard, raising its front, then its middle, and finally its hind legs. Anakin's Subatar cleared a low ridge of gray stone. There are those who say you can define a Jedi by his skill with the lightsaber. I want my ability to be respected. Respect for Stahl's fights. Barris smiled. Watching you, one would almost think you could give Master Yoda a good contest. That made him blink. Master Yoda? You must be joking. Her smile vanished. Why would I joke about such a thing? Master Yoda is reputed to be the greatest lightsaber master ever. Don't tell me you never had a fighting class with him. Of course I had classes with him, and I agree that he's a fine teacher of technique, even if he does have to stand on a platform so that his students can see him. His dexterity is amazing to see, especially considering his lack of reach. Earnestness crept into his voice. That's just schooling, Barris. It's all theory and supposition, even if it's being taught by Master Yoda. It's not real fighting. This time, instead of replying immediately, she gave his observation some thought. What makes you think Master Yoda has never used a lightsaber in an actual fight? He almost laughed out loud, then thought better of it. Obi-Wan and Luminara might overhear, and choose to inquire as to the source of so much hilarity. Anakin's explanation, he knew, would not go down well with his teacher. Like all other Jedi, Obi-Wan revered the Grand Master. Certain subjects Obi-Wan would lecture him tirelessly were not appropriate subjects for humor. That didn't mean he was going to ignore his companion's question. Come on, Barris. Master Yoda, engaged in serious dueling outside the fencing arena, can you actually envision such a contest? Of the images that sprang to mind at such a thought, each was more amusing than the last. Who could he reasonably be expected to fight? Someone Tuki's size, maybe? It's not the size of the Jedi or the amount of power running through her lightsaber, but the strength of her heart. Anakin nodded knowingly. Give me size and power any day, and keep your heart. His response verged on blasphemy he knew, but he was curious to see how the other Padawan would react. She handled it more calmly than he expected. You should be ashamed to say such things, Anakin Skywalker. How can you question the proficiency of Master Yoda? I'm not questioning his proficiency, Anakin shot back. I can't, because I've attended his teaching sessions. There's no one faster or more adept with a lightsaber in a classroom. All I'm saying is that teaching technique is not the same as using it in battle. Besides, Master Yoda is... well, he's not young. As for questioning anything at all, a good Jedi is supposed to question everything. Self-assurance is the best kind. While I freely concede that the original Yoda vs. Vader video is quite a flawed work, I was satisfied enough with it that I was willing to let it stand as it was for posterity, if nothing else. However, the original video got muted because of music copyright, so my hand has been forced. Unfortunately, I deleted my original audio files for the voiceover a while ago. I didn't start archiving until late, I'm afraid. And the original video was made with Windows Movie Maker, so simply rescoring the original video with new music was not an option. And given how my standards for quality have risen since the original release, I wouldn't have been satisfied doing just that anyway. My analyses of both characters will pull exclusively from the classic expanded universe, the novels, the comics, the video games, and source books. So with all of that out of the way, let us begin. Darth Vader and Grandmaster Yoda, the Broken and the Sage. If these two pivotal figures in galactic history were to meet in single combat, who would win? At the time of his death during the Battle of Endor, Darth Vader was a 44-year-old human male. However, he was no typical example, having suffered horrific injuries that necessitated an extensive cybernetic rebuild. 
All four of his limbs were prosthetics. All of his remaining organs were regulated by implants, and a respirator mask allowed his seared lungs to function. These blasted remains were interred within a suit of Sith dark armor, including a full-face helmet, plated pauldrons and chest piece, a codpiece, and greaves, with a military-grade armor weave bodysuit as the base layer. Vader's physical performance levels were a trade-off. On the one hand, his mechanical limbs, in combination with chemical enhancements from his life support systems, granted him superhuman strength, sufficient to lift an adult male off the ground with an outstretched arm. With all of his biological systems regulated by machines, Vader's endurance was nearly unlimited, while his heavy armor allowed him to tank even lightsaber hits. However, the prosthetics were bulky, and the armor was top-heavy which restricted Vader's range of motion and impaired his mobility. He retained manual dexterity in his hands, allowing him to employ quite intricate blade work, but the dynamic gymnastic maneuvers that he had favored as Anakin Skywalker were simply impossible for Vader. Though strong enough to directly overpower most opponents, Vader's stilted movements made him easy to dodge around and evade, a weakness that has allowed various adversaries to score hits on him. Vader compensated through the use of stalwart defensive postures, allowing the opponent to make the first move, then leveraging his strength through active defense and staggering them. This conservative approach also had the additional goal of protecting Vader's vulnerable chest-mounted control panel, which regulated his cybernetics. Furthermore, Vader was not completely immobile, relying on balanced footwork to deftly sidestep and outflank opponents. Most of the time, Vader fought slow and steady, allowing his cybernetics to do most of the heavy lifting, simply using force precognition to time out his movements. Vader typically kept full-fledged force enhancement in reserve for especially challenging opponents, unleashing his fury in a calculated burst intended to immediately overwhelm. However, Vader's success in battle was predicated on his strength advantage, and he experienced his greatest difficulty when this core attribute was neutralized. Whether contending with an opponent who stays out of his crosshairs and prevents him from directly leveraging it, or worse yet, an opponent whose strength matches his own. By the end of the Clone Wars, Grandmaster Yoda was an 877-year-old member of Yoda's species. Yes, that is the official name. Members of his species were distinguished by their short stature, two foot two in Yoda's case, their green skin tone, their long pointed ears, and their tri-digit hands and feet. Yoda was elderly, dying of natural causes a mere 23 years later, at age 900. His age showed in his wrinkled features and thin white hair, and his native performance levels were hit hard. He demonstrated labored breathing and severe arthritis, walking with a pronounced limp, relying on a cane to maintain basic mobility. However, Yoda's strength in the Force allowed him to transcend to his physical limitations. His enhanced speed and agility were astounding, allowing him to dance circles around opponents, while the momentum generated by these flying acrobatics made him a serious heavy hitter, overcoming his lack of muscle mass. However, his old age left him poorly suited to handling physical strain, and the Force could only make up for so much. The Revenge of the Sith novelization explicitly attributed Yoda's defeat at Palpatine's hands to fatigue. Even his short bout with Dooku on Geonosis, a confrontation that Yoda dominated, left the Grand Master visibly drained. Yoda was fast and powerful, but he lacked sustainability. However, instead of adopting a more conservative fighting style, Yoda leveraged his agility to the fullest, gambling on his ability to overwhelm his opponent before he burns out. And the overwhelming majority of the time, Yoda was successful. Furthermore, Yoda was capable of adopting stalwart defensive postures when necessary, conserving his energy by leveraging his dexterity. Yoda relied heavily on force channeling to mitigate the physical demands of his fighting style, which allowed him to maintain his performance level for quite a long stretch by the standards of typical Form 4 masters, 
but he was by no means an endurance fighter. Yoda's success was predicated on his ability to quickly overwhelm his opponents through overwhelming speed and power, and he experienced his greatest challenge when prevented from doing so. Whether because the opponent stays out of Yoda's crosshairs by keeping his distance, or worse yet, because the opponent can reliably endure Yoda's onslaught. Darth Vader, the Avatar of Strength, and Grandmaster Yoda, the Avatar of Speed. The fact that Yoda's entire fighting style is built around compensating for his short stature clearly demonstrates how much of a weakness it is. Vader, on the other hand, has the superior height and reach afforded by his human physiology and his cybernetic rebuild. Despite being a blasted husk of humanity, Vader's life support system ensures a consistent physical performance level where Yoda is forced to draw heavily from the Force to compensate for his extreme old age. While Yoda's agility allows him to easily outflank Vader, this is a known weakness, and the reason for why Vader consistently favors defensive postures. Furthermore, Vader leverages his strength so as to subvert agility by off-balancing opponents. Because Yoda's fighting style effectively consists of hurling himself at his opponent like a cannonball, he is playing into Vader's hands. While Vader wouldn't be able to leverage an offensive advantage over Yoda without leaving himself completely exposed, his active defense is perfectly suited to neutralizing Yoda's intense physical assault and the weakness represented by Vader's control panel meant that he would be much more inclined to rely on defense in any case. And this is where Yoda's middling endurance and sustainability comes into play. He won't burn out immediately, but he can't slug it out indefinitely. Vader, on the other hand, has been forced to rely on his endurance to compensate for his impaired mobility, patiently grinding opponents rather than rushing in. Furthermore, Vader's lightsaber-resistant armor provides him with a margin for error that Yoda simply doesn't have. Darth Vader gets the edge for physical capabilities. Anakin Skywalker was one of the most naturally talented and skilled Jedi swordsmen of his generation, honed by training and sparring with Obi-Wan Kenobi, and hardened by repeated engagements with Count Dooku and Asajj Ventress. As Darth Vader, he was the most infamous Jedi killer of the era, massacring Jedi gatherings on Kessel and Kashyyyk, and slaying such notables as Anya Kuro and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Vader's legacy was in his students. His direct Sith apprentice Galen Merrick, who went on to best his own master, his Dark Jedi trainee Karis, who created the Tripsest form, and his son Luke Skywalker, who emulated Vader's technique, passing it on to the new Jedi Order. As a Jedi, Anakin specialized in the Perseverance form, initially favoring the classical version Shien, but gradually shifting over to the dueling-centric Gemso variant. He supplemented this primary discipline with advanced training in the aggression form Ataru and borrowed elements from Sarisu and Naiman. As a Sith, Vader's physical reconstruction forced him to completely retool his skill set, as many of his original techniques were impossible to execute in heavy armor. He continued to emphasize Gem So, as the strength based art put his cyborg body to best use. He retained Ataru and Sarisu though he retooled the latter to emphasize blade work, and he further supplemented his skill set with direct training in Mikashi, as well as borrowing elements from all the other forms. A rock-solid power duelist, Vader's moveset was characterized by tight, conservative strikes and parries. Hilt kept close to the body, favoring a two-handed grip for maximum control and precision. His strikes were economical yet highly diversified, employing brutish power attacks, dexterous cuts and slashes, tight thrusting sequences, and surprisingly fluid blade binding techniques. His cumbersome armor largely precluded the use of proper acrobatics, but Vader did employ conservative footwork 
to control the distance and deftly outflank opponents, while using solid power leaps to cover ground. Vader's go-to martial tactic in a lightsaber duel was to use active defense to set up for counters, goading opponents into making the first move so he could meet their attack with a striking deflection parry or shunt block, leveraging his strength and staggering them. When stepping up as the aggressor, he would deliberately target the opponent's raised block, pressuring the opponent without exposing himself by keeping their blade tied up. Vader was most effective against opponents who attempted to actively resist him, so he could simply brace up against them and overpower them. However, this meant that his style was predicated on his strength advantage, so whenever this core attribute was neutralized, Vader's effectiveness was dramatically reduced. Many of Vader's opponents learned not to resist his strength, leveraging their agility and dodging around his blade, exploiting his restricted mobility to stay out of his attack range and outflank him. Most disastrous of all was when Vader was confronted by an opponent of equal or greater strength, as Vader's restrictions left him with no means of combating his own strength-based subversion tactics. Vader compensated for these weaknesses by adjusting his tactics. To prevent opponents from evading and outflanking him, he would use the environment to corral and corner them, maneuvering opponents onto narrow platforms and ledges. He further subverted opponents with integrated force abilities, turning environmental features into traps and weapons, and using dramatic displays of power to frighten and intimidate. His sophisticated psychological warfare tactics reflected his mastery of Dun Mok, expressed most purely in his use of verbal taunts and jeers, themselves enabled by his telepathic abilities. Wholly pragmatic in approach, Darth Vader was more mechanical than fluid, form-following function, a killbot with a lightsaber. However, he was subversively cunning, and wielded his nonetheless advanced skill with confidence and determination. Vader's approach was based around leveraging his overwhelming strength down the path of least resistance, and all of his skills were designed for both functionality and intimidation. His defensive posture projected an image of invincibility, while his full offensive might was terrifying to behold. With over eight centuries of Jedi training and combat experience under his belt, Grandmaster Yoda was the greatest lightsaber instructor of all time, having directly trained every Jedi initiate for generations in classroom sessions. His refined skill was enabled by his prodigious connection to the Force, allowing him to drive Count Dooku into a retreat on two separate occasions and seize a dominant edge against Darth Sidious, who aborted the duel and unleashed his raw force power. His ultimate legacy was Luke Skywalker, who ensured that the classical lightsaber forms that Yoda mastered survived the Purge, and were brought to a new generation of Jedi. Yoda was a master of all seven lightsaber forms, excluding only Vapad, the Form 7 variant developed by Mace Windu, though Yoda's primary specialization was the aggression form Ataru. As Windu observed, Yoda's dedication to this discipline was based around compensating for his physical limitations, the restricted reach and mobility imposed by his stature and age. Yoda was the reigning master of Ataru, and effectively set the mold for how the style was practiced in his era. Not directly stated, but easily inferred from descriptions of Yoda's technique, is his supplementary discipline, the resilience form Sirisu. Xi'an-style targeted blast deflection also occasionally featured. Yoda's moveset consisted of dynamic gymnastic maneuvers used to support his refined, dexterous blade work, using acrobatic rotations to deliver rapid-fire slashing strikes, angling his blade in to block and parry when necessary. His constant leaping and spinning allowed him to cover ground and outflank opponents very quickly, while the momentum generated by these movements went a long way towards compensating for his lack of physical strength, turning wrist flick slashes into cleaving chops and static blocks into driving parries. As an Ataru master, Yoda embraced the idea that his entire body was a weapon, 
and wielded his lightsaber as an extension of his arm. The effectiveness of Yoda's style was demonstrated in his various confrontations with Count Dooku and Darth Sidious during the Clone Wars. Both Sith Lords favored dexterity-based fighting styles, which didn't generate enough power to offset Yoda's momentum, allowing him to deflect their attacks and crash through their defenses with minimal effort. Furthermore, as a small, fast-moving target, he was particularly optimized for dodging around an opponent's attack, closing in and countering, which allowed him to exploit the Sith Lord's shared emphasis on preemptive offense. However, all of Yoda's advantages came with drawbacks. As all of his attacks are performed as leaping spins, this means that his attack vectors are restricted by his angle of rotation. If he is spinning from left to right, then until he has a chance to reorient his spin, he can only attack from left to right. While this is less of an issue given his small size and constant maneuvering, it restricts the types of attacks he can use. Cut reverse cut sequences are off the table, as are thrusts. And the unspoken weakness of a fighting style based around generating momentum and power with flying acrobatics is that if Yoda ever came up against something he couldn't knock aside or cleave through, he'd simply bounce off. Even his use of acrobatic evasions is limited, as he can't alter his trajectory after the fact when he is already flying through the air. Until his confrontation with Darth Sidious, Yoda had never encountered a situation that he couldn't overcome through the direct application of his core attributes. So the basic fact of the matter is that he is completely unaware of his own weaknesses. His tactics brilliantly leverage his strengths, using defensive force abilities to goad opponents into attacking him with lightsaber combat, capitalizing on the false expectation created by his diminutive physique. He does alternate his attack and defensive patterns, and uses telekinesis to set up for lightsaber finishers, but he has no fallback strategies when his primary abilities fail him. He either overwhelms you, or he doesn't. Refined and utilitarian in his approach, Grandmaster Yoda was fluid and powerful, perfection of form, a whirling dervish with a lightsaber. However, he was unimaginative, and wielded his mastery of the art in a narrow fashion. Yoda's approach was based around leveraging his overwhelming speed and power as fully and directly as possible and all of his skills reflected this focus. In essence, the only way Yoda could fight was by flinging himself at the opponent like a cannonball. While their skill sets are different, their skill configurations are similar both specializing in an offensive form that best leverages their core physical attributes and employing supplementary forms to fill in the gaps and round out their combat performance. However, where Yoda simply developed Ataru and Sarisu to their nth degree and left it at that, Vader kept going, blending techniques and diversifying. This is reflected in their movesets. Both perform simple and direct blade work by rotating their entire bodies into strikes, but Vader leverages his manual dexterity to perform more intricate blade work, where Yoda's reliance on acrobatic rotations reduces him to a chopping machine, a flying circular saw. That isn't to say that Yoda's style lacks complexity, or that he doesn't employ different techniques, such as targeting the opponent's blade to deflect it aside, but his actual physical moveset does not vary. What you see is what you get. Along with his incredible speed and mobility, Yoda's success is predicated on his ability to generate and coast on momentum, using it to batter aside the opponent's blade. Against most opponents, 50 pounds of Yoda behind every strike is more than they can handle. Their blocks don't hold up and their counters simply glance off Yoda's blade without making a dent, making Yoda virtually undefeatable. However, if anyone possesses the strength to endure Yoda, that person is Darth Vader. The Starkiller clone employed a very similar fighting style to Yoda, and as a man-sized combatant, he would have been capable of generating more momentum and power. Not only was Starkiller incapable of directly overpowering Vader's defenses, 
but Vader had no difficulty simply swatting Starkiller out of the air. The only person who successfully achieved this was Luke Skywalker, who channeled his rage into force enhancement and overmatched Vader's strength. Yoda's reliance on acrobatics means that his strength cap is set by the momentum that he can generate with his physical mass, so force-based strength enhancement does him no good. Speed is all he has. Which leads us to the question of whether Vader can contend with Yoda's greater speed and consistently intercept him with his blade. Yes, he can. That is exactly what his tight defense is designed to do. If he can deflect a firing squad's worth of blaster fire, he can keep up with Yoda's assault. While Yoda is certain to successfully outflank Vader and score hits, Vader can tank the damage, and his own active maneuvering mitigates Yoda's ability to do this. And unlike Yoda, Vader has a margin for error. The only proven way to deliver significant damage is by penetrating Vader's defenses directly and actually hacking into or impaling him. And the only proven skill-based means of doing this was by attacking Vader from two vectors simultaneously, whether through Master Level Jarkai or Integrated Physical Combat, tying up Vader's blade and then striking his exposed flank. Yoda's acrobatic rotations prevent him from using double attack moves like this. As rapid as he is, he can only deliver his attacks one at a time. The only area where Yoda's speed provides a decisive advantage is defense and counter. If Vader were to take a dedicated offensive stance against Yoda, the Grandmaster would have an easy time simply dodging around Vader's attacks and closing in. However, it's for exactly this reason that Vader almost never takes a dedicated offensive stance. Yoda's advantages over Vader are known weaknesses that come into play against practically everyone, and Vader's entire approach is built around addressing these weaknesses. Both of their fighting styles are predicated on their overwhelming physical advantages, yet Vader leverages his strengths in such a manner as to compensate for his weaknesses, where Yoda tries to override his weaknesses by leveraging his agility to the fullest. Against most opponents, this is more than sufficient, but Vader actually possesses the strength to resist him. And for an untiring cyborg killbot tussling with a little old man, that's all he needs to do. Darth Vader gets the edge as a martial artist and lightsaber duelist. Anakin Skywalker was the most naturally gifted, Force-sensitive of all time, boasting a midichlorian count in excess of 20,000 per cell. Though he never meshed with Jedi philosophy, he developed rapidly as a practical Force-wielder. However, Anakin was content to simply coast on raw talent, developing according to his aptitudes and interests, rather than actually constructing his skill set. As Darth Vader, his reduced force power forced him to rebuild his skill set. Thanks to a combination of his newfound dedication and formal Sith training under Lord Sidious, Vader developed into a powerful Sith Lord and was arguably the archetypal Sith warrior. The first and most obvious limitation imposed by his cybernetics was the power cap. Though still incredibly strong in the force, Vader was stripped of his potential and was no longer capable of surpassing Darth Sidious. The second limitation was his inability to make full use of certain abilities, specifically energy manipulation and healing. The former prevented Vader from using Force Lightning, which made him an oddity amongst Sith Lords, while the latter stymied his efforts to overcome his handicaps. Vader attempted to use Sith Dark Healing, to rejuvenate his lungs and remove the need for a respirator, though his success in this area was limited. The healing he experienced was temporary and could only be maintained by constant intense rage. While Vader has accomplished this on the battlefield on at least one occasion, his attempts to harness this ability were unsuccessful, as his joy at being able to breathe freely undermined his fury. 
Though still capable of enhancing his physical performance level via the Force, his application of this ability needed to be extensively retooled. Most of the time, he simply used it to enhance his reflexes while allowing his cybernetics to do most of the heavy lifting. His cumbersome armor restricted his use of acrobatics, though he could still quickly cover ground with force-enhanced power leaps. When necessary, he could use brief bursts of speed to surprise opponents, or actively channel the dark side via force rage. The precise effects of the Sith amulet fitted into Vader's right-hand gauntlet are unknown, but as one of its previous owners was Lord Khan, who maintained control over his Sith followers through mass force suggestion, my belief is that the amulet specifically enhances telepathic powers. As a Jedi, Anakin was capable of influencing the minds of sentients and beasts alike, and as a Sith, Vader developed the ability to communicate with the minds of others, and probe the thoughts of his enemies. Notably, he has successfully employed this power against opposing Force wielders, the most notable example being when he learned that Leia Organa was his daughter while probing the mind of Luke Skywalker. Though this is mere speculation on my part, I believe that the majority of the visions that the Starkiller clone experienced during his battle with Vader on Kamino were not memory flashes, but psychic attacks unleashed by Vader. A master of telekinesis, it was easily his most prominent ability. His maximum lifting strength was several tons, sufficient to tear starships out of the sky, while his kinetic output was sufficient to shatter a luminized Densicris, a material reputed to be unbreakable. He could casually overpower the Force defenses of even powerful Jedi Masters, while his own barriers only failed against opponents of equal or greater strength. His favored method of killing was telekinetic strangulation, though he has employed everything from simple pushes and shoves to advanced throws, using all available loose objects as deadly projectiles. This clear focus on brute force demonstrating the influence of Form 5 lightsaber combat on all of his skills. Vader almost seamlessly incorporated such offensives into his lightsaber sequences, in accordance with the norms of the Dun Mok tactic. As a combative force wielder, Vader's goal was to leverage his power for maximum effect, not engage in a force arm wrestle. Though capable of overpowering the force defenses of opponents, he bypassed them with thrown objects, as telekinetic barriers only cancelled out telekinetic influence, not physical momentum. All of his offensive force abilities combined functionality with intimidation, cowing opponents with theatrical displays of power. Instead of directly contending with the opponent's full strength in the Force, he undermined their concentration with psychological warfare enabled by his telepathy. Darth Vader doesn't take chances. His first priority is always covering his own bases, and he doesn't fight fairly if he doesn't have to. He leverages his strength down the path of least resistance, subvert and overpower. Despite his preference for avoidance strategies, Vader was perfectly capable of contending in a direct force power arm wrestle. Where Vader typically came up short was when his own subversion tactics were used against him, a good example being the conclusion of his battle with Galen Merrick. Vader hurled a multi-ton metal construct at Merrick, and Merrick did a catch and return and hurled it back. Though Vader successfully defended, Projecting his power outwards to deflect the projectile meant lowering his telekinetic barrier, leaving him vulnerable to Merrick's follow-up force repulse, momentarily disabling Vader, and giving Merrick an opening to crush Vader beneath more debris. As with lightsaber combat, Vader was most effective when using his powers for defense and counter, and most vulnerable when forced to step up as the aggressor. At the end of the day, Darth Vader stood tall as one of the greatest Sith Lords in the history of the Order. I have often compared Vader to Ludwig van Beethoven after he went deaf, as both individuals were natural talents who had their primary attribute ripped away, forcing them to completely revise their skill set from the ground up to compensate, and ultimately becoming greater than they ever would have otherwise.
While the scope of Vader's abilities was, relatively speaking, limited by his cybernetics, and most energy-based attacks were impossible for him to execute, his applications of the abilities he did have at his disposal were fluid and extremely varied. Prior to Anakin Skywalker's Jedi Apprenticeship, the greatest Force talent known to the Jedi Order was Yoda, who set the benchmark that Anakin was compared to. Considered the most powerful light side force wielder prior to Grandmaster Luke Skywalker, Yoda was the quintessential Jedi Master, ranked alongside figures such as Nomi Sunrider and Thawne. He spent centuries in study and meditation, establishing himself as one of the most prolific Jedi instructors of all time, effectively setting the mold for what a Jedi should be. An archetypal Jedi Sage Master, Yoda's centuries of experience led to an extraordinary depth of understanding and power, though this shouldn't be mistaken for invincibility. Within the Jedi Temple's Kudaka Chamber were the Montur Stones, six multi-ton boulders that were used to develop and test telekinesis. Due to their weight, merely jostling one of the stones was considered an accomplishment. The Rusan-era Jedi Grandmaster Fay Coven was capable of lifting all six while in meditation, and at one time, so was Yoda. Darth Vader is living, breathing proof that an adept's physical state does affect his ability to wield the Force, and by his own admission, Yoda couldn't lift more than five since passing the age of 700. The Grandmaster's ability to ascend as a Force Spirit speaks to his attunement to the higher dimensions, but his ability to influence the physical plane has waned, and he can only channel the Force for so long before he simply burns out. Despite this, Yoda's contemporary feats were nothing less than godly, and he boasted an absolute knowledge of all the Jedi standards. His enhancement of physical capabilities and speed was reflected in his fighting style, while his mastery of Force Heal allowed him to treat major wounds in both himself and others. Given how much of his time was spent in meditation, Altus Sopor was obviously one of Yoda's primary skills. During these sessions, he would reach out with his senses to probe the currents of the future, allowing him to perceive faraway events and experience visions of the future. In this state, he could turn the course of entire campaigns with battle meditation, enhancing the focus and morale of his allies while demoralizing and subverting enemy forces. On a more immediate level, his perceptions allowed him to detect threats and danger, while his connection to life enabled his formidable telepathic abilities. His awareness of the emotional states of others allowed him to sense their motives and enabled his ability to form empathic connections, such as those he forged with animals. When connecting with other sentients, he could influence their thoughts, implanting suggestions or erasing memories, though the latter was a drastic option that Yoda rarely used. Yoda preached that the Jedi used the Force for knowledge and defense, never for attack. Accordingly, he heavily emphasized defensive abilities. In his various confrontations with Count Dooku and Darth Sidious, neither Sith attempted to use direct offensive telekinesis against him, instead bypassing his TK barriers with thrown objects and Force lightning, clearly deterred by his powerful defense. To defend against thrown objects, he directly leveraged his power and overrided the opponent's telekinesis, seizing the projectile. Against lightning, he displayed an exceptional mastery of Tutaminus, his ability to manipulate and redirect this energy, suspected by Dooku, to have been derived from Sith techniques. However, though Yoda's passive barrier was omnipresent, his ability to defend against thrown objects and lightning were active powers, meaning that Yoda could be blindsided. Furthermore, both powers were predicated on his ability to dominate the opponent in a force arm wrestle. Not an issue against Dooku, but his undoing against Sidious. Rather than engage in a telekinetic tug of war over a single senate pod, Sidious employed a sustained barrage of thrown objects to put Yoda on the defensive, denying him the opportunity to override his control of one object 
by hitting him with another. When Yoda attempted to absorb and redirect his lightning, Sidious simply sustained his output, overriding Yoda's ability to contain it. Though both were hurled back by the ensuing explosion, Yoda was worse off in the end. For obvious reasons, Yoda was forced to balance out his defensive capabilities with offensive powers. With telekinesis, his maximum lifting strength was several hundred tons, sufficient to tear starships out of the sky, while his precision handling of multiple objects allowed him to levitate a formation of destroyer droids into the flight path of a vulture droid squadron, destroying all. On a one-to-one -one level, Yoda could casually employ minor telekinesis to overpower and disable inferior adversaries, employing basic force pushes to thrash and scatter, pulls to disarm enemies, and lightsaber throws to one-shot individual targets. Yoda's approach was built around overpowering the opponent through the direct application of power, even as most casual force attacks were brutal in their intensity. However, though he could overpower lower-level combatants with ease, opponents of similar strength posed more of a challenge. He was powerful enough to overcome Sidious's telekinetic barrier and later force Sidious to give up the high ground by hurling a multi-ton senate pod at him. But he couldn't accomplish these feats on a whim, instead forced to capitalize on lulls in the combat to gather his energies. However, this limitation interfered with Yoda's ability to chain his powers, forcing him to adopt a two birds one stone methodology, using one ability for multiple purposes and trying to use the opponent's energies against them, redirecting Dooku's force lightning back at him and doing a catch and return with one of Sidious's senate pods. While Yoda was quite adept at this, the basic fact of the matter is that he wielded the force like a tactical nuke and was incapable of multitasking. Dooku exploited this weakness to facilitate his retreat in both of their engagements, forcing Yoda to choose between pursuing him or saving his allies from Dooku's death traps. Grandmaster Yoda stood tall as one of the greatest and most powerful Jedi in history, but he was not without his limitations. Centuries of meditation and teaching allowed him to develop all of his abilities to godly levels, but his skill set was not optimized for combat. The vast majority of the time, his raw power more than made up for this. If Yoda is capable of quickly overpowering the opposition through direct force abilities, he will not hesitate to do so, but he is inexperienced at contending with equally powerful adepts. For this reason, Yoda's applications of the force in such situations, while quite devastating, were few and far between and he otherwise favored lightsaber combat. In their development as Force wielders, Darth Vader and Grandmaster Yoda were almost the inverse of one another. Where Yoda spent centuries training with and refining the classic Jedi powers, Vader's meteoric rise on the back of talent was followed by a period of forced redevelopment to overcome his handicaps. Yoda was a slow burn where Anakin nearly burnt out. Both have seen their powers diminish due to their less than ideal physical conditions. However, Vader's limitations are far more severe, as his cybernetics interfere with his body's ability to channel the Force, where Yoda's old age merely reduces his tolerance threshold, his flow is uninterrupted. As a result, Yoda is without question more powerful than Vader, and in a direct contest of force power, Yoda would no doubt win. Though physical enhancement figures primarily into lightsaber combat, where I have already outlined my conclusions, their different applications of this power sets the tone for their differences. Yoda's maximum output was greater, but Vader's application was more efficient. This dynamic was reflected in their telepathic abilities, though these were effectively off the table due to their comparable defensive capabilities. First addressing the viability of Yoda's telekinetic attacks against Vader, Yoda would be able to directly penetrate Vader's telekinetic barrier, but not on a whim, and Vader would be capable of mounting an active defense. 
A successful force throw against Vader is a possibility, as the Sith Lord has been blindsided in the past, but unlikely due to Vader's defensive skill. And Yoda can't exploit Vader's vulnerability against Force Lightning. Examining the opposite side of the coin, Vader would not be able to directly penetrate Yoda's telekinetic barrier at all, so Force Choke is off the table. However, based on Yoda's demonstrated performance against Palpatine, Vader's rapid-fire force throws would be an effective subversion. If anything, Vader's preference for manipulating multiple lighter objects makes him more effective against Yoda due to his higher output. Yoda's Tutaminus gains him nothing as Vader can't use lightning. Both are prodigiously strong in the Force, and both base their approaches around leveraging their power for maximum effect. However, Vader took the path of least resistance, blindsiding the opponent and bypassing their defenses, where Yoda instigated power struggles, crushing the opponent in a Force arm wrestle. Vader makes a point of avoiding such contests, and has only come up short against his own subversion tactics, essentially attack chains, where even Yoda's subversions were hammer blows, focusing all of his power into individual attacks. What it comes down to is this. Yoda has no experience tussling with force wielders of equal or even comparable strength, and he had no expectation of ever doing so. With the Sith in hiding, Yoda was the biggest game in town, his supremacy unquestioned for centuries. By contrast, Vader's Sith career began with a catastrophic defeat, forcing him to learn from his failures and retool his approach. Furthermore, Vader was preparing for an eventual confrontation with his master, optimizing his skill set specifically to combat other Force wielders. Darth Vader gets the edge as a Force wielder. Each combatant represents the complete package that can be expected from a traditional Sith warrior and a traditional Jedi Knight respectively. Jedi Knights are trained to serve as flexible field agents, capable of serving in any role required of them, combative or non-combative, where Sith warriors function exclusively as martial enforcers and warlords. Darth Vader is so perfectly tailored to his purpose that he is incapable of doing or being anything else. Yoda is the better way to be, but Vader is the better combatant. As physical combatants and lightsaber duelists, each is optimized to exploit the weaknesses of the other, but only in a defensive capacity. If Vader took an offensive stance against Yoda, Yoda would have an easy time dodging around Vader's stilted movements and closing in. Vader compensates for his reduced agility by leveraging his strength to stagger opponents, a tactic that Yoda is vulnerable against due to his reliance on flying acrobatics. And due to Yoda's lack of sustainability, he is disinclined to try holding out with pure defense. Heavy offense is all he really has. Though Yoda can conserve his energy by adopting a grounded defensive posture and leveraging his dexterity, this stance would not be viable against Vader, due to his inability to contend with Vader's cyborg strength. Acrobatics are all he really has. Force Enhancement allows Yoda to override his old age and capitalize on his agility, but his success is predicated on his ability to overwhelm the opponent before he burns out. Not a problem against most opponents, but against an untiring cyborg killbot whose strategies revolve around gradual grinding, a serious liability. While Yoda's godly performance level would make him a serious challenge for Vader, Vader's strength-based subversions would still be effective. Not only does Yoda have no experience dealing with Vader's tricks, as Vader is one of the only combatants capable of using them against him, but also because Vader's application of them is specifically based around combating Yoda's style, tactics, and overall fighter type. Grandmaster Yoda has been directly involved in the combat training of every single Jedi for the past 800 years which has led those same Jedi to model their fighting styles on him. 
Yoda doesn't follow the textbook, he is the textbook, the quintessential Lataru master. And because Yoda is the core archetype that every Jedi of that time frame is emulating, he is exactly what Darth Vader has optimized his skill set to combat. Vader's overpowering cyborg strength allows him to simply swat Yoda out of the air, his battle precognition allows him to time out his strikes to intercept Yoda, while his overwhelming telekinetic assault allows him to blindside and distract Yoda. And should Yoda unleash his full power or penetrate Vader's lightsaber defense, Vader is physically durable enough to tank the hits. Now, all of this isn't to say that Vader would defeat Yoda easily. Darth Vader possesses significant advantages over Yoda, but none of them are truly overwhelming and ultimately only matter when stacked up together. Yes, Vader physically outclasses Yoda in every category save agility, but Yoda's one advantage is to such an extreme degree that it's guaranteed to cause Vader problems. Yes, Vader is a more strategic and versatile swordsman, but Yoda's performance level is so ridiculously high that he's guaranteed to cause Vader problems. Yes, Vader is a similarly powerful and more subversive force wielder, but Yoda's vast reserves of strength in the force is guaranteed to cause Vader problems. Vader's success is based on his ability to keep Yoda at arm's length and pound the crap out of him, dominating through attrition. He cannot overcome Yoda with direct offense. Defensive subversion is all he truly has. If he took the Darth Malchus approach and tried meeting Yoda head-on and slugging it out, he'd be overrun. The only thing that keeps Vader in this fight are his conservative tactics. Situations where Yoda would come out on top include confrontations in confined spaces, where Vader's bulk restricts his maneuverability while Yoda would be bouncing off the walls. But most potential arenas support Vader's tactics, Yoda uses the terrain as a platform to support his fighting style. Vader uses the terrain as a weapon. I declare Darth Vader the victor.